kind of covered this in a sense on our Ohio State show a couple hours ago because th there's a small number of teams that fit this category, but Oklahoma's right there. And what we're seeing play out fits it to a T this year where you can become so elitist in your look at college football and your team that really you're not happy about anything. You're not satisfied. You're not content. And that doesn't mean that you can't raise concerns about beating West Virginia on a last second field goal and barely beating Tulane. Certainly there, there's a difference between, okay, we aspire to win a national championship and this is not looking like a national championship team. Let's talk about it. Let's evaluate it versus mm -hmm. just kind of always being dissatisfied because, Oh, we're just winning. We're not winning by enough. And that a game like this, where going into the game, I would have still said and did that Oklahoma was the better team, but it just seemed like Texas had a lot of positive vibe surrounding the team and the program versus Oklahoma having negatives despite an undefeated record, the things were not where they should be. And maybe a game like this uh, just re-energizes everybody. Yeah. And I think, I think that it has, I, you know, and, and for whatever reason early on this first half of the season, first five games of the season, you know, it, just everything's not clicking, you know, both offensively and defensively, but I think more so on, on the offensive side of the ball um, based on, you know, where they were, um, you know, what Oklahoma was projected to do. So I think just from the fan base, there was a lot of, I think, um, cautious optimism, if, if I could say just, I think a lot of people thought, know what this team could be, um, but they just weren't able to put it together. Not something wasn't something wasn't clicking. And and you know, I mean, uh, we've we've been on here for twelve minutes, so I think we've delayed the inevitable long enough. I in my in my years of watching um, Oklahoma football, I don't I, I don't know that I've ever seen a fan base and, and granted you're always going to get that to a certain extent with a backup quarterback. He's always has been and always will be the most popular guy on campus. Um, I, I don't know that I've ever seen more of a fan base and a team get energized and rally around um, one kid more than they did with Caleb Williams in this game. You saw it. You saw it on the 66-yard touchdown run when he came in there for the – I don't remember if it was third and one or fourth and one, but the, the short yardage play to begin the second quarter. And and then when Spencer Rattler made a couple of more mistakes, um, it was inevitable. I thought – I mean, I, I obviously you could tell Lincoln Riley didn't want to have to make that change. And it's hard. you got to think about it from his perspective. He recruited – he recruited Spencer, Spencer since he was about 14. So he's got a, a long-standing invested relationship um, with him. Not that he doesn't with some, with some of these other kids, but I think, you know, based on um, where he was at the beginning of the year and where he kind of got to himself, he's just, he was just, but he was just making too many mistakes. You know, the, the interception, um, he, he got close to another interception on the tip ball um, when, when Oklahoma um, was on cl closer to the, uh, uh, the Texas side of the field. Um, you saw a, um, obviously that fumble was very, almost a, almost a carbon copy of what happened last year. So I don't think Lincoln had a whole lot of choice at that point. He had to make some sort of a change and, and you can tell the team, uh, the team rallied around, around him. Uh, they invested in him and, and it seems like on the field, obviously I don't have any connections or anything uh, like that inside the team, but, but you could, you could tell that they fed off of, you know, off of his energy. You could fed, they fed um, just, and I think more than anything, there's a leadership quality, the it factor that Caleb Williams has that, you know, and this is not a necessarily a, a detriment to Spencer Rattler. It's just, he just doesn't have it. It's just, you know, he just doesn't have, he has, um, you know, he Spencer or uh, Caleb Williams is more in the mold of a, of a Jalen Hurts and a Baker Mayfield in terms of being a fiery leader type of personality. And um, so, and he doesn't have that. So I think that's a big part. That was a big part of the, um, the excitement from both. I mean, in and I know Lincoln obviously is not going to cater to the fan base because uh, I mean, 
no one's going to win games like that. But it seems as though, and I don't know what these reasons are, it does seem as though that um, Caleb has, has won over the team. And, I mean, I think that's interesting just in itself for, for a true freshman um, versus a, a kid that was, you know, a preseason Heisman Trophy favorite and a, you know, preseason number one overall pick or at least top five pick. And so um, I don't know, obviously don't know. I mean, we, we can kind of get into the specifics around that. But, you know, like I said, I think just the, the turnovers in itself were, were something that he Lincoln obviously made the decision where, um, you know, he had to um, he had to get a, get, get a spark uh, for Oklahoma. So, um, and, and they got that. They were able to get that spark for the first time all year. 